Hello everyone, my name is Liz Liu. Today I'm going to talk about threading as my 3SH3 project. So firstly, let me start by introducing what is thread. Thread is a unit of execution within process. A process can have one or more threads. Therefore, we have two concepts here. One is multi-threaded process and the other one is single-threaded process. A multi-threaded process, that means that just means a process that contains more than one threads and all threads are running in parallel. And on the other hand, we have a single threaded process, which just means the process only contains one thread. Here's a diagram that illustrates the idea of multi multiple threads running at the same time. This blue box represents the process that's cur currently running. And within this process, we have three, three threads that are running at the same time. This arrow represents the um, running time, the runtime as the process proceeds. And as the time goes on, we have three threads that are running. So how does thread work? When a process starts, it assigns memory and resources to the process and all threads in the process shares the um, authorizing the process shares of memory and resources. In a single thread process, the, o the OS only has one pathway for execution and the, the only one thread within the program which contains user stack and kernel stack. Um, out, outside of the thread, we, we have the process which contains a process control block and a user address space. For a multi-thread process, the OS um, supports multiple concurrent pathways for execution and each thread within that process, it has its own uh, thread control block, user stack and kernel stack. Outside of those threads, we have the, we have the process and the process also comes uh, contains a um, process control block and a user address space for process and that are um, those cons those those elements are shared among all threads within the process. Here's a diagram that illustrates the idea of um, single threaded process and a multi threaded process. So on the left hand side, we have a process that's, that is single threaded. You can see um, those elements are, um, are supporting the thread. And on the right hand side, we have a multi-threaded process. You can see the register and stacks that are owned individually by each thread. There are three stats of three states for thread execution, running, ready, and blocked. Running just means the threads are currently running and executing in this states. Ready, which means are, which means the threads are ready to be executed. And um, lastly, we have blocked, which means the threads are currently blocked and no longer allowed to be executed until um, it is unblocked later. There are two levels of threads. One is user level threads and the other one is kernel level threads. In, term of, in terms of user level threads, user managed and implemented all the threads and the OS doesn't recognize all user level threads. It is easier to implement it and require less context switch time um, comparing with uh, kernel level threads. It is not required for any hardware for user level threads, and it is relatively faster comparing with kernel level threads. However, the disadvantage for user level thread is um, if one user level thread is blocked, then the entire process becomes blocked. Here's a, a diagram which illustrates the idea of user level threads. So in this case, we have three threads that are introduced in the user space level. And um, essentially this is a wall between user, user level and kernel level. 
but as I have already mentioned, the kernel level cannot have access to anything that's in the means of user level. For kernel level threads, uh, we, we have all the threads that are created and management that, that are created and managed by, uh, by the OS. And that becomes the core of an operating system. It requires more complicated implementation and more switch time comparing with user, user level threads. Um, comparing with uh, user level thread, hardware support is needed and slower comparing with um, user level thread. However, one big advantage for kernel level thread is uh, if one kernel level thread is blocked, um, other threads can still proceed and perform their execution, which is essentially uh, the main difference compared with the user level thread. Here's a diagram that illustrates the idea of uh, kernel level threads. So in this case, we have three separate threads that are introducing the kernel level and we have a process here. Then what's the best way of doing things? Um, people start thinking about how about we combine user level threads and kernel level threads. Therefore, here's the idea of the combined solution. A combined solution is that uh, it requires both user level threads and kernel level threads, which is recommended for operation and performance purposes. Um, all the threads are created and um, being implemented under use, user space since it is faster to create it and implement there. Um, however, the bulk of scheduling and synchronization of threads is being done by the application. Here is a, um, a graph that represents the idea of the combined approach. We have um, user level here and kernel level here. So essentially, in this case, user level and kernel level are working together and um, performing different duties for um, as a threat uh, creating and performing process. Okay, that brings the end to our lecture. And we have a lecture review problem. Um, so the problem is what's the difference between um, multi-thread and multi-thread programming and single thread program. I will give you guys 20 or 30 seconds to think about it and I will bring up the answer. So in terms of multi-threading process, that just means um, multiple threads are working at the same time. There's no event loop while pulling in a multi-threading model. The CPU runtime is utilized in a better way with no time waste and the idle time is the least. Um, multi-threading process improves the overall efficiency of a program and in a multi-threading process, if one thread is paused, the other threads can run as usual. However, uh, on the other hand, we have the single threading process. A single thread runs simultaneously in a single threading program. The model uses a process event loop during polling and the CPU runtime run is not as fast or as uh, efficient as multi-threading multi process. The result is the, the result is less effective for the program. And this brings the end to our lecture today and thanks for attending.